Hey gang, it's Paul with Studback. Welcome back to our channel. Jordan and I are back here at our main remodel project. I'm in the hall bath and we've got to get this thing done. Now we get a lot of questions about the materials we use, how do we choose them, how do we measure for them, and where do we buy them. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about baseboard in a bathroom and all the options you have, including one you may have never thought of, but that we think looks absolutely killer. Now most DIYers, when they run baseboard in a bathroom, they're gonna run to the home center and get either primed MDF or primed finger jointed pine. Now they're gonna look great for a year or two, but as soon as they get wet, the MDF's gonna swell up. We've all seen that. And the paint on both of them is gonna to start to bubble, chip, and it's gonna mildew. Now we have another option that we like to use that avoids all those issues. And if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, we have two other options we want you to consider and we think they look absolutely killer. The first of those options is to simply use tile as your baseboard, right? You can simply buy more of your floor tile, rip it on your wet saw or cut it with your snap cutter and put it on the wall just like that. Or you could buy a complimentary tile that highlights your floor tile and that looks great too. And there's several things we like about this, right? It's absolutely waterproof. If this gets wet, it's just like your floor getting wet. You just gotta wipe it up. It's never gonna warp, the paint's never gonna blister, and it's never gonna mildew. But it does come along with a few cons. It is a little bit of a commercial look and not everybody's gonna love that. The other thing about this is you are gonna have some grout joints. Depending on your layout, put it back here behind the vanity, but you're gonna have one here at the corner. And on this long wall, you're gonna have a grout joint every two feet if you're using 12 by 24. The other thing about it is this unfinished edge on top. You could put some metal trim on there, but that's gonna get a little pricey, right? Most people would just put that on there, caulk this, bring their paint color down, and call it good. And that looks fine. But this last option we're gonna talk about right now is a home run. And we are talking stone, baby. Now this is a sample from our stone yard, but they sell four inch high backsplash material nine feet long for $55. So I could easily do a small bathroom like this with two pieces. And look how great that looks. It finishes off the floor and the tile beautifully. And in fact, over here, we have the backsplash from our marble vanity against the wall so you can see what it looks like in one longer piece. And since it's already polished on these two faces, all you have to do is cut it to length with your wet saw or a grinder and a little bit of silicone and put it on the wall. It couldn't be any easier. And check it out against the floor. See how flat our floor is since we use the leveling system? And this doesn't have any of the disadvantages that a tile base would, right? The top edge is finished. There are no grout joints. And when's the last time you saw something like that in a commercial building? Now, before we head to the home center, let's quickly measure this bathroom and see how much baseboard we need. I'm gonna start over here by the door. Now it's 22 and three quarter, but I'm not gonna use that number. I'm just gonna round up. I need two feet. On this back wall, it's five and a half feet. I need six feet. So two and six, I'm at eight. And I know this is gonna be two, so I need 10 feet right here where the vanity goes. And the extra that I measured for will easily cover this. So we're at eight feet. Come over here by the window, six. I'm at 14 feet, I already know that's three. 17 feet, another three, 20. And we got this little bit, a couple of feet here. 22 feet will do plenty. So if it comes in eight footers, I need three eight footers to do this bathroom. We've actually already measured the master bathroom. We know our total amount. Let's head to the home center and see if we can find what we need. It's really hit or miss these days as far as material, right? We all run into that. Let's hop in the truck and see if we can find the material we want. All right, guys, here we are in the molding aisle of our local Home Depot, and we're gonna break it down into what's on that side and what's on that side. So let's start over here. As you can see, these are 16 footers, gang, right? And 12 footers. And what we have here, one of the selections is finger jointed pine. They take short pieces of pine, finger join them like that, glue them together, send it through the shaper and prime it, and it's ready to be installed and painted at your project. Come on down here a little bit. Everybody's favorite, MDF, medium density fiberboard. Got all kinds of profiles and it's also primed on one side. A little further down, we have a small selection of stain grade material. It is one solid piece of material ready for stain. There's no joints in it. But if you wanted to buy this and prime it and paint it, that would be a good option too. But in our bathroom, we don't want anything with wood in it. We've all seen a bathroom that has MDF base and it gets wet and it swells up and looks terrible. So we're gonna to head to this side of the aisle where they have some polystyrene products and check those out. Let's start at the beginning on the other side of the aisle and see what they have. 
It's a polymer coated MDF. It's a pretty thick coating and they completely coat all four sides. We've used it before and it's pretty good, but check this out. It says no painting required, right? But the next line says easy installation, cut, nail, and touch up. Well, what are you gonna touch it up with? The liquid nails they have right here? Now guys like me, I'm gonna nail it up, fill those holes and paint the whole thing. But I guess you could glue it up, right? But this isn't what we're looking for. Let's head down a little bit more and see if we can find something that's gonna work in our bathrooms. This next little section right here, the no miter installation section, right? If you don't have a miter box, you don't wanna deal with all the angles, this is where you head to, right? You've got your outside and your inside corners for crown. You've got plinth blocks, rosettes for your casing. And this is what it looks like when you're done. Not the look we're after, it looks fine, but let's head on down and see if we can find something we can use in our bathrooms. The next little section here, polystyrene, basically a plastic, right? That's what we're looking for in our bathrooms. Why? It's completely waterproof. If that tub overflows, the toilet overflows, it's not gonna ruin our baseboard. But all this is matched to look like wood. It's not what we're looking for in our project. Let's head to the next bay. All right, here's what we're looking for. The white polystyrene. It's gonna work great in our bathroom. If it ever gets wet, you'll never be able to tell. And we need base, right? So we only have like five choices here. One, two, three, four, five. So there's really three things we're after here. We need something tall enough that's gonna cover where the existing base used to be. We have that old line of caulk on the wall. Even though we scraped it off, you can still tell where it was. So we need something tall enough to cover that. The second thing we need is kind of a modern design at that house, minimalistic. So we want our base to be modern and minimalistic. And the third thing we're looking for, it has to be proportionate, right? If we walk in that bathroom, it has a crazy tall base or a huge crown that's not proportionate with the trim in the rest of the house, it's gonna look like it's off, right? Like we didn't know what we were doing. So we're looking for a thinner, more narrow profile. So that really only leaves us with these two right here. This one's cool. It's only 7 16 of an inch thick. It's four inches tall. But one thing I don't like about it, this edge is rounded and this edge is rounded. So if I put that on the floor, we're gonna have a rounded edge of our base on our nice flat tile. And I'd rather have a square edge right there. So let's hop over to this one. It's a little bit thicker than this one, which I like, but it has this colonial edge. So I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna send this through our table saw, rip off that edge, have a nice square edge we can put on our floor. And a bonus, this is a little cheaper than the other one. So let's grab what we need and get out of here. All right, we're back here at the job site and we don't even need to go back inside because we already know that we're gonna cut this profile off the baseboard. And so instead of this being the top, this is gonna be the top. So let's head over to the table saw and get it set up to rip this baseboard. One thing you gotta know when cutting polystyrene, you gotta cut fast. I'm gonna show you what happens when you cut slow. Check it out. It melts it, and that's kind of a pain to get off. Now let's make a fast cut. There you go. Now that we have our baseboard ripped to the right height, let's head over here to the chop saw, cut it to length, start running some base. All right guys, the base is done and it looks just okay. And why does it look just okay? Because we have some pretty big gaps here between the base and the wall. Why is that? This is a remodel. This is the original bathroom wall, the original drywall, and it's gonna have some waves in it, especially on a plumbing wall, right? But we want our base to be straight. If I get my nail gun and I nail this thin base to that wall every 16 inches into a stud, now we're gonna have a wavy base. But check it out right here. See this nice straight grout line? And our baseboard is parallel to it, nice and straight. That's why we're doing this, right? So all we're gonna do is caulk this and we're gonna trick the eye into thinking the wall is straight by making the baseboard straight. Let's grab our caulk gun, make this thing look sharp.
Alrighty, cool man, it's the next day and all our caulking is dry. And what we have done, we have made the illusion that the wall is straight by making the baseboard straight, right? We used the nails as a clamp while the glue dried. And if your eye references the baseboard against this grout line, which is perfectly straight, they are parallel. So we did our job. Our next step is to paint this. But before we paint, we have a few things we wanna do. We wanna fill all these little nail holes. And since this is pretty smooth plastic, I wanna give it a light sanding and give it a coat of primer before we put our finished color on. And to fill these nail holes, I usually use simple spackle, right? But I have a different product I wanna try out. I've actually used it before and I forgot about it. It's outside on the table, let's go check it out. What's that product I'm talking about? It's Durham's Water Putty. Comes in a can like this, looks like it's from out of the 70s, right? And it's not a putty, it's actually a powder. And I love that because if you need this much, that's all you need to mix up. But if you wanna mix up the whole can, go for it. And it doesn't shrink when it dries. That's key for me, because we all know how that looks, right? You put some over that nail head and it shrinks and you got a little divot and you put a second coat. With this, hopefully just one coat, let's mix some up and get it done. Alrighty gang, this stuff dries very quick. Let's sand it down. I just saved some of these from my pad sander and I use them for stuff like this. They work great. Check it out right here where we had these three nails. Look how easy that sands and perfectly smooth. Let's scuff up this whole thing and we're ready for paint. I'm gonna vacuum real quick. All right, we got it all sanded and vacuumed, and now I'm just gonna put one strip of blue tape right here on the tile to protect the floor from our primer and our paint. And I gotta say, this unpainted base with all the nail holes filled and caulked in looks better than the painted base at my house. I can't wait to see what it looks like with a coat of paint on it. It's gonna look fantastic. All right, all the blue tape is down. We're ready to start priming. I'm using Zenzer Bullseye 123 Primer. Sticks to all surfaces without sanding. We sanded it, so it should stick even better. Here's how I do it. I usually use a little cut-in bucket, so since there's not much left in this gallon bucket, I'm gonna work right out of there. Check out my brush suspension system. Just a little nail driven in the ferrule, with a little angle, and I can hook it right there. Nice, huh? Let's get to it, bud. It's like, it's like painting glass, it's so smooth. The plastic is. I don't feel any like pull or drag from the wood, like when you're painting wood. I'm gonna the final coat of color to the master bath tomorrow. I guess I could pick up a gallon of this color and give it its first coat. All right, our primer is on and it looks absolutely phenomenal. Now we did get a late start today. Jordan and I had a big conference call we were on, so we're not gonna be able to put the finished color on, but we're gonna show you that in the next video. But before we end this video, there's two really important things I wanna go over. Number one is baseboard termination points. What do I mean by that? Well, I wasn't too thrilled about putting that thin baseboard in this house, but it worked for us. So check it out. The baseboard ends at this face frame on the cabinet. And yes, we could have gone with a thicker base here. But behind Jordan over here on our door casing, 
we've got a pretty thin door casing and you never want the baseboard to be thicker than the door casing. So it worked out great there. Yeah, don't pay attention to that one. We gotta take the door casing down and redo it because mom changed right. the mom changed the design on me. Right, but you can see right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then over here we got this bull nose tile. You can even see we profiled it to match, and we're gonna grout all that to match this old grout. It's gonna look great. And then in the master bath, we actually had a piece of the Schluter Jolly trim that it tied into, and it all looks great. The other thing we want to talk about is that stone we put down as baseboard. So it's pretty rare when you spend more money on a product that looks really nice and it's faster to put in. Usually they look really nice and they're complicated to put in, right? But stone base, really easy. And that $5 per linear foot extra cost, well now you're not paying for filler, primer, sandpaper, and all the paint. Not to mention the time it takes to apply all those products. So you gotta look at that when you're spending more for a product that's quicker and easier to install. So that's gonna be a wrap on this video and you guys totally earned it. Go ahead and splurge on the stone, wrap your like button in it, smash it for Jordan and I, we really appreciate that. Please ask us a question, drop us one of your awesome comments, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on our next video. This back wall should be six. So let's head over to the table saw and get it set up and rip this. Oh shoot. One thing you gotta know about cutting. One thing you need to know about culling. One thing you need to know. One thing you need to know, very important about cutting polystyrene. You gotta go slow. I'm gonna cut fast and show you what happens. It's the opposite. Oh, that's right. <laughs> One thing you gotta know about cutting polystyrene. <laughs> Is it polyethylene? It doesn't matter. It's styrene. Ethylene. Styrene. 100%, we were just at Home Depot saying polystyrene forever. Oh, oh that's, yeah, you're right. Polyethylene is Coke bottle. <laughs>